This is the fully redesigned 2024 Toyota Tacoma. And I think they did an excellent job. The way that they did all these curves and angles really just make it look modern, look tough, and even sleek at the same time. Now this is the TRD off-road and there's some added packages on top of that. This one is decked out and we're gonna go over a few of those things right now. As I mentioned, this is the TRD off-road and there's a few things you get with that. You get the TRD off-road black wheels. You get the TRD off-road sticker. But more importantly than those, you get a little bit of a lift. So you get a little ride height increase. You also get the Bilstein off-road shocks. Now you can see those blue shocks right in there. They are better than what you get on the standard or the SR5 or Sport. You also get a locking rear differential in this one, a multi-terrain ABS system and multi-terrain drive modes. Now, I mentioned also that this thing was decked out. Now, why do I say that it's decked out? Because this is not the TRD Pro, it's just the TRD Off-Road. So it just has the Off-Road package on it. But the reason that I say that this is loaded up is because it also has the TRD Off-Road Premium package. Yes, there is a package that can go on top of that, and this one has it, and it costs $8,800. So it's an $8,800 option to give you these heated and ventilated leather-trimmed eight-way power seats in the front. You get a leather-trimmed heated steering wheel also. The 14-inch infotainment screen, JBL premium audio system you get the moon roof already connected auxiliary switches the ac inverter so that gives you power capability back here in the tailgate so you do have a 120 there and also on this side you've got a 12 volt and you got a couple usb ports in there so that inverter gives you a little bit of power throughout the truck and then you also get the digital rear view mirror. So there's your normal view. You can see out the window, you can kind of see me there and then we'll flip to the digital camera. Some people like them, some people don't. I'm not a big fan, but I actually just haven't had a chance to get used to them yet either. You get your towing technology. So you've got a tow haul right there and you've got another button over here. And then you also have your trailer brake system right there. You also get the powered rear window. And lastly, you get a powered lift gate. That's pretty impressive, right? The one thing I like about this one is you don't have to push your button. There's not a button up here or something like that. You can actually just kind of lift up on it a little bit and it will close on its own. Okay, so that is your $8,800 package now is it worth it do you really think that that package is worth it i think if you tow it's worth it if you don't tow just skip the package and cut down on your price because the whole rest of the truck is pretty good the tacoma trd off-road comes with the iforce 2.4 liter four-cylinder turbo with 278 horsepower you also get 317 pound feet of torque it comes with an eight speed automatic with zero to 60 in about seven seconds so it's not the quickest thing but it does the job towing you're going to be able to tow up to 6500 pounds with a payload capacity of 1700 pounds fuel economy is going to be 19 in the city 23 on the highway for an overall average of 21 miles per gallon that is decent decent but for a mid-sized truck i would expect it to be a little bit higher than that it'd be nice if it was in that 23 to 24 range 
Now let's go check out this five foot bed. Yes, this is only five foot. You do have an option for a six foot, but I think with that TRD premium package, I think it's only for the five foot beds. I may be wrong, but I believe it's only for five foot beds. So if you go on a six foot bed, you won't be able to add that uh, package, or maybe there's just some things you can't get on that package, but it's a decent sized bed, I guess. Um, you can use it. I mean, I hauled some tree limbs and stuff in and it was, did okay. Would have been nice to have a six foot one, but having it powered is really nice. And I do like how everything is blacked out on this one with the Tacoma lettering and everything. So here we've got just a bed liner here in the back of this one. Uh, you'd think with that premium package, you probably would have gotten like a spray in bed liner, but it does actually have, this is all plastic around the outside. So it is protecting the bed. So that's pretty cool. This is a spray in bed liner down here along with what's on the back here. Well, this is actually plastic here. This does seem like it's a little bit higher durability piece that they've uh, added on to this. So it's not actually part of the bed, but you do have more plastic around here. So the bed is somewhat protected um, to, from scratches and things like that. Uh, but I would definitely get you a bed liner thing there, a mat, bed mat to give you some added protection in the bottom. Um, like I said earlier, we do have the 120 volt plug right there and you do have two USB plugs and a 12 volt right in there. And there's your fuse for the inverter. You have a little storage space right there. And then also on this side, you do have more storage space right here. This will come down, store a few things. There's, they've got the hitch pin in there. I really do like this track system here. So these can move up and down this rail and make easier and multiple tie down points. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Now, as I mentioned just a minute ago, you don't have to press the button to raise it and you can just lift up slightly a little bit and it will take it from there. So that works out really well. And then this one does of course have your hitch and a four and seven pin connection so you are all set there it's a scorcher today and the tacoma is cooling off and while it's doing that can you guys go down and hit the subscribe button it helps me get more awesome vehicles like this tacoma to bring to you guys to show you the good stuff the bad stuff the inside the outside the the awesome things and some of just the annoying things so go down hit the subscribe button and then i'll see you on the inside all right, let's take a look at the inside of this Tacoma. There you go. There is the door pocket. You see TRD right here. Look at all those bottles that you can put in here. That's a lot of storage there. You even got storage here for your cell phone. That's at least that's where I would put it. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. Good job with that. Now we're gonna look at these seats. These are <laughs> upgraded seats in that $8,800 package. So you've got multi-directional positioning and you also have lumbar control there. Uh, the seats are really nice. They're good and bolstered. I like the design in the center. Um, good headrest, it's really soft and comfortable. All right, quick little pan around there and then we're gonna hop inside. Okay, so looking at the dash here, now you can see that it's got Tacoma written in the dash. It's actually pretty stylish, I do like that. I, and this is all plastic around here, but I don't mind that. It looks shiny and it looks nice. You got Joe Rady's little Twinkie tray right up here. And this is, uh, you know, this is harder plastic up here too. So I'm guessing you need to really get up into that TRD Pro if you're wanting to get some softer materials here. But the thing is, it really doesn't matter and this stuff looks really nice in here um, you've got a glove box and yeah it's pretty good size glove box it's got a lot of stuff in there but it's a good size glove box this is that 14 inch screen and it is big but it is nice and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute you go up here on the dash and you do have the jbl system right there you do have a JB. You go up here on the dash. 
If we go across the dash, you have a speaker there. You come across here and another JBL speaker in the middle and another speaker on this side. Up there in the door pillar and on this side also in the door pillar. So speakers everywhere, big speakers down in the doors. Okay, so here's your driver's display. You do have a few options you can do. So if you press your OK button on the steering wheel, it'll bring this up and you can look at either one you want to. So this will slide and you can change how the center things look in between that, in between the RPMs on this side and the speedometer over on this other side. You can change those in there by just pressing left or right gives you a little bit of different information all right so then if you want to change anything on there you hold it down and now you can go over to your trip information over here and you can cycle through different things there audio navigation driving support eco indicator fuel economy or leave it blank Transmission temperature, there's your trailer mode. You got pitch and roll also. Tire pressures, which they are kind of, well, not too bad. And then your trip information, okay? So then if you press the left button, you can go to the center and then you can go on to the other side. So then you can put your same, those same things are all on this side also, which you can change. So you could set up anything you want on that side. Turbo gauge, which is generally what I've had it set on. And I try to keep this one on fuel economy because I kind of think that's interesting. And then here in the center, you can change a few options. This is where your settings are gonna be at. So this is where all of your driver assistance features are. And they make it hard for you to change these while you're driving because you have to hold the OK system down. That turns the LDA options and you can check those for your lane departure assist. All right, and then you have a back button, you can go back and then you can change all of these other functions. Most of these functions won't be available while you are driving. And you get down to here to vehicle settings, you can click on that one, you gotta hold it down and then you can tell it to, I don't want you to tell me to take a break. Um, your DRCC you can change, trailer settings. This is where you do all your trailer settings. You can add trailers. So this is part of that trailer technology package that's included in that 8800 um, TRD off-road premium package. So like I said, this is something you have to decide whether it's important for you to have or not. And Trailer light check. You can actually check the lights on your trailer to make sure that they are working without having to, you know, get multiple people to stand back there and watch. Um, so those are those options there in the settings. Um, you can go through those. Uh, if you purchase the vehicle, you see a little bit more on that. Um, and then I just usually leave that set. I went on driving support. That way I can see my radar cruise control and all of that stuff. All right steering wheel really nice steering wheel we talked about this steering wheel it's also part of that package so it's a heated leather trimmed steering wheel and it looks really nice it's very very comfortable very soft i really do like it um, on the right side you have all of your driver assistance features and on your left side you have all your stereo and voice recognition that's good and down here my wife loves when they have like a handle here in the center because she likes to rest her hand down there while the lane centering is on. So therefore, then she just kind of rests and watches what's going on and the car pretty much drives itself down the road. But that's my wife, that's not everybody. Um, you can see your stocks up here really well, which is pretty good. Um, and I, sometimes they get hidden behind the steering wheel. So we're gonna go across here and now look at this infotainment screen. So here is your 14 inch infotainment screen that you're paying extra for in that premium package. Uh, a few things, you do have navigation on here, um, music, Bluetooth, you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless. You go to your car, this is gonna give you your trip information. 
they keep a current when, when you start up the car and drive and kind of just gives you, gives you your average miles per hour, how many miles you have left. You go into history, then that's going to give you your mile per gallon, what, what, the best mile per gallon that you got, which we got 22.6 and you can update that and it'll move it over to the next day and you'll start at zero. Um, so we go back here, you do have vehicle alert um, system, which doesn't look like it's got anything on here. So go down here. This is where you're gonna set up all of your stuff. You, your general is just going to be your normal stuff. Um, we go down here and we're gonna go to display. Your screen, you can set up You know the brightness and contrast and those things of your screen day night that type of thing your sound media you can change all of your jbl uh, audio settings in here so you can get different levels you can set up treble bass that type of thing in here um, and then we go on down farther if we go back we're going to go into vehicle customize now this is where you can change your lighting um, on the outside, your automatic lights, your doors, um, a two press unlock, which I don't like. And what else do we have? Unlock all doors. I like that. I like to be able to unlock all the doors at the same time. Go into your climate control. You've got your, with AC mode is automatic whenever you're remote starting your car. And then um, the ACC adaptive cruise control, customize. Um, we'll go back a little bit farther here, and that's pretty much it. Everything else you do in that display over here on the driver's display. So that works out really well, um, actually, because the stuff that you need is going to be right here in front of you instead of having to dig through the infotainment screen. Go down. Here are your climate controls. You got your vents here, your volume, and everything for your stereo, which you can turn on and off. Over here, you have the button for your heated steering wheel. You have these big knobs for your climate control. They're nice. I always feel though that the volume knob should be bigger than the climate control knobs because it makes me have the tendency to grab this for the volume instead of this up here. So, um, that but that's just me. Uh, here are your heated and heat and your ventilation for your seats on both sides. You have, um, and then you just have a few other buttons, recirculation and that type of stuff. You have your modes for your feet, your head, where you want the air to be blowing. Um, and then that's just all the regular normal stuff. Your hazard is over here, which is surprising because usually your hazard is up here in the middle. All right, we go on down and you do have a wireless phone charger here. Over here you have two USB-Cs for charging your phone. You also have a 12 volt right there. You do have this little pocket right here, which you could set your cell phone or your passenger could put their cell phone in there. Nice, big, bulky shifter. I like that and it does say TRD on it. You got electronic parking brake. You got auto hold, which is nice. Four low, four high and two high. Now to what's cool about this is you can't move that so nobody can accidentally switch this you have to push this button on the side to be able to move that so that kind of keeps it locked into one spot i do really like that do have drive modes right here let's pop through our drive modes so we go here and you have sport normal and eco Okay, so when you click tow haul, it just writes tow haul up there on the screen. It doesn't actually show anything. And then you do have a rock crawl. So you have to have that's got to be set up a certain uh, certain way for that to be functional. So that's where your tow haul and your rock crawl and you got MTS and then you've got your trailer right here. Here is a camera view. So there's your 360 camera view right there. We can click on this and change different views all around the truck. And then we'll go hit this one over here. You can do different colors and the color of the truck is blue. So you just see the same thing on the screen. Okay, um, let's put this in reverse and we'll check out the other cameras. So there's your bird's eye view of the truck. 
And then you have all of these camera angles right here. So we have this one here that you, we can three, oh, you can zoom in on, that's cool. Out, so you have your front camera, rear camera, you have down the sides, in front of you, down the sides behind you, you have a bed camera, and that one's locked. What else do we got here? Yeah. Okay, and then you have a rock crawl <laughs> camera. <laughs> so, all right, there's all of your camera angles. One thing that this does have, this is also an added option, was a stabilizer bar disconnect. So this is awesome for off-roading. Um, so you don't see that too many in too many times in the trucks other than like the uh, raptors and those uh, off-road truck real heavy off-road trucks but you got an option on that on the tacoma here that's pretty cool two cup holders back there and then you have the center console which is not a huge um, area for your arm but it's good enough and then inside here is decently deep it's about the depth of my hand approximately uh, we've got some camera equipment in here and some safety glasses and stuff like that. Um, and up here is where you control all of your sunroof and your rear window right there. Um, and then I mentioned earlier we do have the auxiliary buttons right here that are all um, hooked up and ready to go for you to use. And then you've got all of your automatic and your, you can actually lower your tailgate from inside the truck. So that's the front. I'm going to go get in the back and see whether there's enough room for a full size adult back there. I'm about six foot and I'm not so sure it's going to be big enough. Um, and we're going to have to take a trip here uh, tomorrow and we may have to take another vehicle because I don't know if everyone can actually fit in here comfortably. But let's go back there and check it out. Okay, now for the back. The door opens decently wide. Um, all right, the seat is in my driving position and my knees are pretty well smashed up into the seat. So for a six foot person, not a very good amount of room here. I would bring you in here, but it's a little cramped as it is. The only thing that's back here is the two cup holders in the center console and then there's two USB-C ports here in this back of the center console and a 120 plug-in so um, that's it you don't have cup holders in the sides either um, you do have some stuff down in, that you can store in the door but that's pretty much it back here um, there is a little storage under the seat so let's check that out and then let's hear some pricing and go for a drive all right, so let's check out the space underneath here. So you do have storage space up underneath here, and there's a little bit more also on the other side. But that's really about it. You can also fold this down, and there's your JBL sub right there. And it looks like there might be something there to change tires with. But that's about it, guys. Pricing for the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. So the SR5 starts out at $36,200. That is a great value. Uh, and the sport model above that is only about another four or $5,000. So check that out, see which one you want there. Now, this TRD off-road starts at $41,800. Now that's still not a bad price for what you get in this truck. Now that is minus that $8,800 premium package that this one has. So if you look at that, and this one as tested with the options and the destination fee, this one comes in at $54,829. Is it worth it? You tell me. Let me know down in the comments. Now let's go for a drive. All right, nobody's coming. We're gonna pop right out here and we're gonna do a zero to 60. We've got it in sport mode. Not gonna be very fast, like seven seconds. So one, two, three, here we go. It's to the floor. Kinda loud. 
they're 60. <laughs> uh, so we're a little loud. Um, it does sound like it's kind of struggling, but really, I mean, how often are you going to um, be trying to go zero to 60 in this truck? Um, you know, being able to tow 6,500 pounds, that is really good, and it's kind of um, up on the upper edge of some of these other small um, or mid-sized trucks, I guess. Uh, a lot of these mid-sized trucks now are basically full-size trucks. I mean, this is not, would not have been a mid-sized truck 15 years ago. Um, this is basically what the full-size were, or pretty close. Uh, it, it's really nice. Um, it actually is uh, better than what I expected, which is why it's been such a popular thing. And whenever they redesigned it, it was such a big deal. And I get it. I understand the Tacoma really, really needed an update. And they really did a great job with this one. Um, I don't feel like the person next to me is really close. I feel like I've got a decent amount of space in here. Um, the screen is good. Of course, this is the upgraded screen. They paid a little extra for that one. Um, the, but everything is laid out really well and really nice. Toyota did a good job there. Um, the suspension, the, dr the drive actually feels pretty good. The smaller, sharper bumps, you do feel a little bit of a jolt and a little harshness to it. But when you get into some of the bigger things, it really just eats those up without any problem. So the ride is actually fairly comfortable. Um, the steering wheel is nice, um, although uh, I feel like the dash is either too low. Um, I mean, I've tried lowering my seat and then I don't feel like I'm at a good position, driving position. Right now I feel like I'm good at a good height but my knees are super close to the dash and to get my hand comfortable to hold the steering wheel i still feel like the steering wheel needs to be back about another inch or i need to be forward another inch but if i do that then my knees are in the dash so i'm having a little trouble getting in that perfect uh comfortability but that's me i you know Someone else, a little bit shorter than me, might be perfect. Somebody a little bit taller than me might be able to lower the seat and get a little more room. So that's just, uh, I'm just kind of at that awkward height in this truck. Uh, the driving dynamics of this truck are, are good um, because it is off-road. So it's gonna have a little bit more travel in those shocks overall. You do have a little bit more lean going into the corner. So, um, the weeble wobbling is a little bit more evident in this thing, how it kind of just bounces around. But of course, if you didn't have the off-road, you probably would have a little bit stiffer suspension there and it would feel a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, you gotta sacrifice some things whenever you wanna have a good off-road suspension. Fuel economy is actually pretty decent. Um, like I said earlier, it would be nice to see the average in the 23 to 24, but when we did our real world mile per gallon test, um, it fared very well. So you guys might want to check that out in a couple days when it goes up. Then so we're going to take a turn here and you're going to see everything kind of wants to lean and it, it wants to push me into the center or pull me to the door. I have to kind of fight against it the seats do a really good job they are bolstered really well to kind of help with that um, but I just want to give you an example of what I mean there when you're sitting at a stop you can't feel any vibration coming from this engine it is amazing it I have some time I had to look down and check to see if it was still running or is, is there some hybrid mode that I didn't know that this truck had but no this isn't the iForce Max this is just the regular iForce so there is no hybrid on this one and it just feels like the engine is off <laughs> so that is awesome they have balanced this engine really really well so if I was going to be in the market to buy a mid-size truck and I had a decision to make um, would would I choose this truck yes this is, would be a very viable option. This would be one of my choices would be a Toyota Tacoma, depending on what trim level. Now, I'm not an off-roader, so the TRD off-road for me is not a big deal. The TRD Pro, not a big deal for me. Although I like the way they look. 
I like the exterior. I like the design and I like the added stuff that make it big and cool and bulky and make it just look like a beast coming down the road. Do I need all that stuff? No, but I would probably buy one of those just because I think they look cool. <laughs> um, but um, it, this would also be in competition for a Ranger Raptor for me. Um, and the Ranger Raptor has, a, has more power, you know, and I think similar gas mileage. So um, that's, that's where I think they probably could push this and get a little bit better gas mileage, you might pull in a few more drivers. So that's my only downfall to this. The way the dash fits in here with me and also uh, the miles per gallon, I think could be better out of a mid-size truck. Uh, there's, you know, there's full-size trucks that can get 21. So that's not all that impressive to me. But like I said, it would be a viable option if I was in the market for one. So. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button, then click on one of the videos up on the screen. One of them is um, one that I think that you would enjoy. The other one is one that YouTube picked for you. So I think you're going to like them both, and I will see you in that next video.